Did you know our hearts connect deeply wherever you and I are in the world? Hi, I'm Andrea Petrut, Intuitive Life and Relationship Coach. Here at Healing Through Oneness Podcast, together we find what makes us unique and what keeps us united. We learn of past wounds and ways to heal. We release old stories and create new, empowering realities that serve us now. Join me and my guests to recognize the truth within, discover why you are precious, connect with what sets you apart, and allow the world to welcome you and resonate with your heart. We are one. My guest today is Mike Patterson. Mike, welcome. Thank you, Andrea. Thanks for inviting me. I invited Mike because (laughs) there's a joke between us. He's not my ideal client, but he is my mentor and friend. And he is the leader of a mastermind I've been in for, I think, almost a year now or something like that. And I, I loved it so much and it helped me so much. And Mike is a treasure of experience and knowledge. And you will see soon why, uh, as I will share a bit about his life and he's going to share w- much more. Mike is an award winning speaker, an author, business strategist, consultant and corporate trainer with 14 years of uh, British military service and over 30 years of senior management experience. Traveled over 50 countries on six continents and you work with over 50,000 individuals and companies in over 40 industries. And uh, you say you're a self-confessed learning junkie uh, and you always add to your personal development toolkit every day. You have studied, Mike, with some of the most successful people on the planet, like Tony Robbins, you walked on fire, you work with Jim Ron, Brian Tracy, Jay Abraham, and Jay Abraham is what brought me and you together, and maybe we're going to touch upon uh, that a bit, and we, with many, many others, and I know you are hungry for knowledge, we always, we, uh, when I say we, I see my colleagues in the mastermind, dear listeners, we hear about you, um, how you spend time learning so much and about the world, about everything you know that is important. How are you, Mike, today with what's going on in the world? I'm fantastic. Thank you. How are you today? <laughs> I am happy that you are here with me because I cannot get enough of what you share and you cannot stop talking once I ask something. Every time I personally uh, in my business have an issue, I find myself stuck or I need some help or I don't understand something like I, I remember we had a chat. Uh, last night about Jay Abraham, because I'm I'm reading the Maven Manifesto. And Jay Abraham is what you and I have in common in terms of values shared. And this is one of the things that I love you as a leader of a mastermind. And I love the mastermind. And before speaking about values and, and, and businesses, thinking about business owners today, we see what's going on in the world, but it crisis come every time, right? This is not like what started two years ago is not the first crisis, is not the last. Crisis are something that happens and it's natural to happen in the world. And every business, one way or another, is confronted with challenges. What is the key thing that you've noticed about businesses in general and and business leaders that maybe they are missing or that is important for everybody to know if we're thinking about what you call disruption proof becoming disruption proof as a business what's your take on that great question thank you andrea the 
this is again from Jay Abraham, who's a, an absolute master at this. And what I've found also looking at maybe 1500 different businesses, that the majority of them seem to have one. If you say this is revenue for a business, they have one activity generating most of their revenue. Yeah. And if you want to scale, if you want to grow your business 20% with this sort of structure, you're going to need 20% more time, 20% more effort, 20% more people, 20% more investment, 20% more everything. And when disruption, COVID, or what's happening now in Ukraine comes along, this is going to collapse. So in order to make a business disruption proof, if you like, the best way to do it, the easiest, the simplest way of doing it is to put in multiple structures that generate revenue. Mm -hmm. Now imagine you have what Jay Abraham calls pillars. You have 10, just 10 pillars and each pillar has two streams of income. In order to get you 20% growth, all you need to do is increase each stream 1%. What's going to be easier? 20% on one stream or just 1% on 20 different streams? 1%. One yeah. percent. Yeah, it's simple. It's really, really simple. Mm -hmm. Right? So doing that, and if you do you bring in an extra activity once a month or every couple of months or whatever, within a year, it doesn't matter. You lose three or four different streams of income. Who cares? Yeah. I have, I have over 50 different activities that will generate revenue. Most people use, let's say, marketing, but they use marketing one way. I know of over 200 different ways and types of marketing. Each way, each type is a new revenue stream. Do you need to put all of them in? No, you don't. But you can have three or five or 10 or whatever, as many as you like. And if you lose three or four, it doesn't matter. It's really, it's not easy, but it's basically pretty simple to make mm -hmm. your uh, business economy proof, disruption proof. Yeah. And I remember, um you know, the discussion might come in terms of can this be done in any type of business, in any type of field? And I know your answer is yes, you yes, can. And sure. and and uh, I say this because you have worked with, I say I maybe some uh, like Jay Abraham, uh, you've worked with in multiple fields and you understand and you can see uh, what people can do in their own field. Um, and I know that every time anybody in any kind of field comes with a problem, you are able to notice what would be possible for them, what opportunities they have. Because this is what you do, right? When people work with you. Yeah. It's how do often, they... It mm -hmm. often comes up in conversation. As you said, I spent, it's probably only the last 20 odd years two to three hours a day. So I've probably listened to over 10,000 hours of audiobooks. I've spent another 5,000 hours reading. I've read thousands of books, watched hundreds of, of videos. As you said, I've, I've walked on fire with Jay Abraham. I, sorry, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. I flew to America, to California to attend a four day workshop with Jim Rohn, who was actually Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins mentor when Tony was 17. I've, all of these sort of things, you know, that's 15,000 hours I've invested in my education, if you like. Mm -hmm. If you say the average MBA takes 3000 hours, I probably got the equivalent of five MBAs. Do I have bits of paper? No, I don't have bits of paper. I'm not interested. What I am interested in is what else can I learn that can help the people I work with? Yeah. And, and 
you know from our time together, people will come up with a question and because of the, the amount of knowledge I've got, I can take bits and pieces from all sorts of different areas and say, try this, right? Or someone's tried something before and it worked for them. So why not? Just to give people uh, a touch upon, upon this, you are not just uh, remembering all you've learned and you've experienced and uh, having this complex network of information and, and picking things. Uh, and you remind me of Jay, by the way, because uh, this is the Jay's style. Uh, Jay is Jay Abraham is a genius marketer that I think he's he's the mentor who taught everybody in between except his own mentors, you know, like <laughs> um, he influenced a lot of people in the world with his ideas on marketing and doing business. But in terms of you, what I've noticed is that it's not just your um, skill in bringing the knowledge you have for the person in front of you, for the business owner. You are also tapping into what the business owner does. Like you're very, you're very specific and very focused, and you really give people what they need in the moment they as an opportunity they take it or leave it they try it or not it's it's their thing but i love that you really see and understand the business owner and the business in front of you and that is very special not many people have this not many coaches and consultants have this ability to read the person in front of them which you have to understand the field of business and to give something that suits both the leader and the type of leadership and what the business can do or what can be done in that business. And for me, as a business owner, that is key. And I know um, what you and I have discussed, and I think you and I know that it's important for people to understand is, you know, why, because we're talking about a mastermind, why masterminds? And why uh, working with coaches and consultants as a business owner, especially? Well, if you think about it, every successful athlete, every successful team, whether it's football or NBA or basketball or whatever it is, have coaches. And that's because business owners in general don't have a sounding board. They can't really go to the families because the families don't know what they're doing and are mm -hmm. probably trying to push them to, you know, get a proper job. Or, yeah. Right? Yeah. Both been, both, both been there. Or they can't go to their friends because they don't want to appear, I'll say, that they don't know what they're doing to their friends. Yeah, They can't go to their employees, their team, and say, uh, guys, I'm stuck. I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That's probably not going to go down too well. So <laughs> where, can they, where, where can they go? Yeah, They go to coach, coaches and consultants. Coaches ask a lot of questions, and coaches believe that the answers are inside, that we actually know what we want and the best way to get there. As a consultant, I found it's often easier to tell them what to do, right? You've got this problem, you know, try this because it's worked for other people. Yeah. Why a mastermind? If you've got 10 business owners in the room, one, they can understand what you're going through because they've been through the same thing. Yes. The other thing is if we put 10 people in a room, each with 20 years worth of experience business knowledge that is 200 years worth of knowledge in the room that you can tap into yeah that is not going to be available in virtually any other avenue any other forum ever yes and it's right? not in your environment right i mean this is the thing that i um i really really appreciate uh, about the mastermind you have created and you invited me to be part of because 
just like you said, I am a business owner who does not have in her family background, neighborhood among her friends, people who think like me, people who believe in being entrepreneurs. I do have some, but it's you, you're also thinking of like-minded and I say like-hearted people, right? To be in a community, in a small group where not just like you say, everybody has those 20 years or more of experience and knowledge in business, but they are like you. They are driven like you. They are committed like you. They want success in their own turn and they want to help others to support each other. That is a very important thing for me in a mastermind. So finding people who can understand me, think like me, who can support me. And uh, I have the amazing opportunity to tap into their brain and especially regarding you to tap into yours. <laughs> well, I think with, with our group, we've got what, 10, 11 people, yeah. all diverse backgrounds, different countries, most like you have moved from a different country. Yeah. But your background is... By the way, did you know my grandfather was Romanian on my mother's side? No, I don't remember that. Wow. Right. So we are anyway. related in a way. <laughs> so your 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 background, your experience, and where you've yeah. come from, and now you've moved to Toronto. Mm -hmm. You've got a totally different background to me, or Joseph, who's Swiss, or yeah. uh, Lucy, who's Poland, Polish now living or you know we've all got different backgrounds different way of looking at things but yeah the number one thing i think in the group everybody how can we help but with so many diverse backgrounds and experience and, and whatever that the answers we get or the questions that can be asked that trigger different thoughts amongst us it's priceless Yes. And the word blind, the words blind spots came to me now while listening to you in a mastermind, you have an opportunity that you don't get very often. <laughs> and we need as business owners, seeing the blind spots, you know, people have two different ways of speaking about the same thing. You cannot see the label on the jar because you are. <laughs> You cannot see yourself. You cannot see what you're doing right or wrong. Uh, there are things you need to hear from outside you, outside your business, so you can make improvements where necessary. And and especially when uh, you are in a crisis and let's face it, everybody does the same. We are in a fight or flight response and then the brain cannot think. You cannot have a clear mind. And you have a clear mind when you have somebody outside you helping you see what's the most important thing, help you think and ask yourself the right questions. And that's what a mastermind, or if you have a coach or consultant, that's what they do. And the, the other thing is, sorry, mm -hmm. the, the other yeah, thing please. is most so-called business owners actually don't own a business. They really oh, just own, they just own their own job because they're too busy working in their business and not, on their business mm -hmm. you know the the test to find out if you have a business or you just have a job you take two weeks off from your business you have zero contact with the office mm -hmm. for two weeks decide you're really enjoying yourself you extend it for another week you tell the office i'll be back a week late that's it that's the only communication you have when you return, you still have a viable business and you have more money in your account than you had when you left. If you can do that, you have a business. If you cannot, basically, you just own your own job. Yeah, I see what you mean. This is a, this is a, uh, this is a discussion that I hear among many coaches uh, to make the difference. And it's, it's about if your business is dependent or of you, uh, on you or not. Because when it's dependent on you, like you say in your own words, as you have a job, and when that can the business can make money without you being present and active and involved, that's when, in your words, you, have your, you own a business. Very, Correct. very good distinction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I said, most 
so-called business owners, when I start talking to them, well, you know, when was the last time you took a, a vacation a week, two weeks and had zero? Like, never. Ah, okay. Yeah. So you don't, you don't actually have a business. You just own your own job. Mm -hmm. And that's not why people got it, you know, left corporate. They did it for something else, but they're not getting there. Um, what, and you're talking about business owners, what is one thing, one mistake that you've seen all or many doing, and you think is very important to be aware of, to work on it? Most businesses now are tactical, which is very short term thinking, like do something to get money to pay the bills now. And it's continuous firefighting. So in order to have a viable business that's going to go long term, you need to be strategic. And because things like COVID happen or Ukraine happens, people are just firefighting. They're just continually firefighting 10, 12, 14, 16 hours a day. That is not the way to build a business. You need to look at things strategically and then put plans in place to achieve your strategic objectives. And they're not. 99% of businesses I look at, even when they say they're strategic, and I start talking to them, they're not strategic. They're tactical. Big, huge, huge, huge difference. This is something that I struggle with, understanding what is tactics, what is strategy, making making the difference between them and understand what is first, what comes next. And I know Jay Abraham talks a lot about it, but honestly, uh, the time when I learned about him and about strategy, uh, I was not ready to be focused and have a clear mind. Can you speak a bit more into that so we can have clarity on the difference between, apart from what you said, why choosing one over the other and what's the, what's the connection between each other? Okay, strategy is linked to your vision. So let's say, where do you want to be as a business in three to five years? That's the goal. That's now you develop a strategy a series of steps to get from A to B. A is where you are, B is where you want to be in three to five years time. Whether it's with your business, whether it's with your family, whether it's with your kids, whether it's with your spouse, whatever. It's the same. So the strategy is how you're going to get there. The tactics are actually the steps, the things you're going to do that will allow you to get there. So strategy is the long term, three to five years. This is where I want to be. The tactics are what's going to get you there. If you're just focusing on tactics, you could be all over the place. You could be going in a totally different direction to where you want to be because you haven't actually said, this is where I want to be in three to five years time. And most businesses I look at, don't have a viable vision, right? A yeah. vision is, well, I will know when I achieve it. You look at most vision statements that it's not measurable. If you can't measure it, you cannot manage it. I was about to say, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't measure something, you cannot manage it, right? It's not possible. So if you don't know what it is you're actually looking for, you're aiming for, then all you're doing is firefighting. Yeah. Right. So speaking about vision, um, people start with, you know, they create a business or they buy one, whatever that is, they make a partnership and they have a vision. That vision usually means growing, which in a business term is scaling. What can you tell us about scaling? Because I know you have a thing about that. When when people talk to you uh, about ask you about scaling, you have something. It's yeah. I was actually having a conversation this morning uh, about it with someone who says, "Well, I'm trying to scale my business," 
And my take on that is either you're doing things that grow your business or you're doing things that are not growing your business. You're not trying. As Yoda said in Star Wars, you either do or don't do. So no you're either, you either putting tactics, strategies in place that are growing your business or you're putting strategies and tactics that are not growing your business. Mm -hmm. And you need to be measuring everything you do. Is this helping me get to where I want to be? If not, stop. If it is, great. How can we do more of it? How can we streamline it? How can we optimize it? How can we maximize it? But people are not measuring what they're doing. They're doing it, and they don't know whether it's helping or hindering. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Well, at least for me, because I this is not the first time I hear you talking about it. And I invite our listeners and people watching this recording to go back and, and you know, maybe listen to slow, um, slow speed to really be able to remember process and, and think of, of what you said, because it's very important. And it's I say as a business owner, it's about mindset. It's about educating yourself. It's about being able to listen to process because, you know, whether we're talking about mastermind or having a coach or consultant, you got to be, first of all, willing to change, willing to listen, even if it's going to be tough because somebody's going to tell you, you know, in a nice way, respectful way. I'm, I'm not expecting somebody to, uh, to say it, uh, in another way, but, um, you're going to find as a business owner, what other people see, not what you see. And that might be a different or totally different perspective than you have. You could say, oh, everything is fine. But someone like you, Mike, could look at things and say, ah, uh, that's not how I see it. <laughs> I see something here and here. And you can, in my opinion, you cannot benefit from coaches, con consultants, or a mastermind if you're not open-minded if you're not mm -hmm. willing to change, if you're not committed and driven to success in your business and as a leader, and if you don't have a vision, because if you cannot see at least you know one step ahead in the future um, and you're stuck, you have a stuck mindset, it's, it's nobody can work with you, nobody can help you. You gotta be you know willing to move forward and allow yourself to see beyond what you see now in the present moment. And honestly, talking about being a disruption proof, willing to see beyond the crisis. Because I think you and I know the word uh, crisis in Chinese means opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right? So right. it's an opportunity to take. And I, you know, I want to leave people uh, usually at the end of, of conversations before you tell us where we can find you um, with something encouraging, positive, inspiring, or simply a message that you have for those listening, especially for business owners, business owners who can, uh, who can get help from you. You know, what can you tell them to support them now? What's, what's a message you have for us? business owners what's the message if you're stuck reach out how's that <laughs> that's the easiest message because i'm i think i'm a simple guy mm -hmm. so i can seem to have the ability to take things that look complicated and over a period of time simplify them mm -hmm. i always believe in the kiss principle keep it short and simple right because mm -hmm. Why do you want to make things complicated? It's it doesn't make sense to me. But yeah, if you, if you're stuck in business, you're stuck in life, you're stuck wherever. Feel free to reach out. Ask. That's the idea to be to ask because every time we ask, somebody's gonna answer. This is yeah. It. Yeah, we need yeah. to trust. Let's let's trust that somebody's gonna answer. Yep. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. It's the same in sales. 
If you don't ask, the answer is always no, so you don't lose anything by asking. In business, if you're stuck, Einstein said the thinking that got you into the problem is not enough to get you out of the problem. So we can only go forward with what we know. But there are other people out there who, because of their background, experience, their research, whatever, know things that we don't. There's things, every time we speak, I learn stuff from you. So it's a two-way street. Right, I'm always learning from from other people in the group. Yeah. So if you don't know, ask. Always, always a good tactic. We're never going to know everything about anything. Yeah. Because yeah. knowledge is doubling, is increasing so fast that you could spend every waking hour researching a subject, and you still won't know everything. It's never going to happen. How people can find you? And I know you have a mastermind that's coming up. Can you tell us more about that and where people can contact you? So the mastermind, as I said, we, we're already in one that I run. This is my second mastermind. I ran another one for two and a half years. But starting 5th of April, I'm running what's going to be 10x. My goal is to help businesses increase their business by a thousand percent in 36 months. It's not easy, but it's pretty simple to do. You only need to have steady growth, 6.6% growth every month will over a 36 month period basically 10x your revenue i don't expect us to do a six percent increase the first month but a one percent then second month of two percent then third month of three percent or four percent fourth month like five within six months any business should be making enough additional revenue that it actually covers the cost of the mastermind and mm -hmm. if you're making more than x amount even you can do that in three months if you're making 10k a month within three months you'll be covering easily covering the cost of of, of the mastermind so that's the way i'm setting it up so yeah Excellent. I really encourage people to look into what you do. So your website is one of them, businessmastermind.me. This is where people can find about the mastermind and what and what's coming. Yeah, there's a maximum 12 people on the board, only one of each industry allowed. So one of the things when you sign up, but this site to, goes into a lot of detail about masterminds in general, the advantages of a mastermind. And somewhere in the top bar, you'll see the, the, the board. And from that, that will take you to information specifically about the 10x board. And then from there, you'll be able to, to join. I've got a really low price. It's only $300 a month, but within a couple of months, if you do what I advise, you'll be generating more than enough to cover that anyway. Yeah, I, I really trust that because I've seen what amazing things have happened in our own mastermind when with a single meeting, somebody changed uh, their life and the way they do their business and really uh crushed it <laughs> so they, 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 within three days they got a ten thousand uh, dollar retainer they needed five grand within yeah. three days got a ten thousand uh retainer yes yeah, so and what we're talking the, about the here is a professional off. yeah yeah mm -hmm. the life really took off yeah but it's yeah. It's amazing. And this is just one example. Each of us is different and have to, are in different um, fields. 
um, but we're, we've been growing together ever since. Mike, thank you so much for, um, for accepting my invitation. Uh, oh, that, thank you for inviting me. It's, it's been fun. Oh, you're always fun. <laughs> Just everybody knows. I always have fun with you. If we're, with, we're talking about very serious things uh, in, in business and issues we, we have. You, Mike, um, I really appreciate you. This podcast is about change makers that inspire others. Um, and you are a change maker. You bring change around you. Uh, I've always seen you attracting amazing people with beautiful souls, beautiful hearts, amazing business leaders, amazing professionals. You have, uh, I would say, a huge network of, of people either you mentor or uh, you learn from or simply friends all over the world. Uh, let's not forget in how many countries you, <laughs> you travel <laughs> and you don't need to travel because online you already have grown uh, even more than you have. Thank you so much for all you're doing, Mike, for how you've been in my life and you have supported me. Um, it's really, really matters to have somebody who is both a friend and uh, an advisor we can trust. Like for me, you are a person that I can trust and I can rely on, even personally, not just uh, in business. So thank you so much. Much gratitude to you and our friends in, in the, the mastermind. And I invite you, those listening, thank you for listening and watching this. I invite you to check Mike Patterson at www.businessmastermind.me. Have a beautiful day and ask. Ask somebody because there's always somebody out there for you. And Mike is one of them. Goodbye, everyone. If what you heard touched you or helped you, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite place for tuning in. Pay it forward by sharing it with others. I'll be here for you with the next episode. I'm Andrea Petrut, your Healing Through Oneness show host. Remember, we are connected. We are one.